as we talk about friends today, I would start just by asking you a few questions to think about on-site and online. I would ask you the questions, who are your friends? Like right now, if you and I was to talk, who are your friends? Secondly, what is a friend? If you were to tell me, Pastor Micah, this is what I, this is what I think a friend is. What is a friend to you? Why do you need friends? If we were to reverse that role, not just the friend that you're looking for, but to ask yourself, I would ask you, are are you a good friend? Are you a good friend? If someone today is saying, Noah is my friend, or Andy's my friend, like, are you a good friend? Are you a good friend? I think a question to all of us today, based and birthed out of Proverbs 18, where it says that if you want friends, you need to show yourself friendly. Fair question to all of us would be is, is, do I show myself friendly? Do I show myself friendly? Some, Some people will say, Pastor Micah, you know, I just never get connected at the church. But then if we talked a little bit, you never high five four or five people close to you. Or you could come late and leave early. You don't go out of your way to go to settings or places where you could even get to know people, but it's easy to be like, I don't know anybody. And it's not just here. It could be in your subdivision. It could be on your street. It could be where you live. It could just be your world where, where you, you're, you're waiting for everyone to do their part, but we don't always look at, am I playing, am I playing my part? Do I show myself friendly? And then when you look at friendships, I think there's a lot of truth in the statement that it's tough to live your best life with the wrong friends. It's tough to live your best life with the wrong friends. A lot of times, it could be in school, Right? So a lot of our our students are going back to school in the next few weeks. And this is important, even whether it's middle school, high school, college, this is important to realize it's tough to live your best life with the wrong friends. You could get in trouble, and a lot of times we could trace it back to the people you are around. And it's not only in school but it shows up in every area of our lives where it could affect marriages, it could affect families. What are your friends telling you? Are they telling you to fight for something? Are they telling you you can make it? Are they telling you, or or have you surrounded yourself with voices that are taking away from the things that you actually would like to see in your life? Proverbs 12, 26 says, good people are careful. They're careful about choosing their friends. But evil people always choose the wrong ones. James 4, 4, you people are not faithful to God. You should know that loving what the world has is the same as hating God. So anyone who wants to be friends, everyone say friends, Anyone who wants to be friends with this evil world becomes God's enemy. Now, I know this is a strong scripture, but I do want you to notice that it's tough to please all men and please God. So if you're saying, Micah, I want to love God with all of my heart, soul, mind, and strength. I want to be a family of faith. I want, and I want to make sure I don't ever upset anyone on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or a snap or a story. I want to serve my Savior, but then I want everyone at school to like me too. I want to be totally sold out to God, but then everyone at the gym and everyone. Jesus himself referenced that you and I would make decisions between being a man pleaser or pleasing God. 
Not everything in your life and in my life should line up with everything happening on the news right now. If you love God, there should be times where someone says something on social media and you're like, that's not how I believe. There could be people parading around. There could be people posting things and you're like, that's not me. That's how it should be. That when you say, I want to be a friend of God, I want a relationship with God, there should be an element of things in the world where you're like, but I'm not friends with that. I've not tied in my belief system to that. And you shouldn't always feel guilty about it. Shouldn't always feel ashamed about it. But there is a pressure, sometimes even an underlying pressure. Like, I want to live for God, but I never want to make anyone or anything upset about living for God. That's inevitable. That's inevitable. If you're going to live for God, there are going to be some times where it is opposite of the things of the world. When I think about friendship, when I think about friendship, one of my first thoughts that I had was a song that they used to sing at our church summer camp. And it, it goes like this, Marquita, friends are friends forever. If the Lord is the Lord of them. Anyone know that song? And a friend will not say never. You're like hugging and crying like, see you next summer. In Toy Story, Woody and Andy and the importance of friendship, they make the statement that as the years go by, our friendship will never die. Now that's great for for this movie, but the reality is you have a lot of friends in elementary or middle school or high school or college, people that you, you ask to be in your wedding that as the years go by, you don't even talk to them anymore. We're talking today about what is a friend? What is the meaning of a friend? Dion Warwick would sing the song, keep smiling and keep shining, knowing you can always count on me for sure. Because that's what friends are for, right? Good times and and bad times. I'll be by your side forevermore because that's what friends are for. My dad's here today from Canada, and it really wasn't even part of my plan necessarily. I've been working on the message for a while, but my dad several i was trying to think even this morning like what what are the tv shows that our family would have watched together because one in particular them in a reference stood out to me but i've shared with people over the years we didn't have a tv growing up so it's not like i have a huge selection of of songs and and things from from tv we didn't have a tv growing up most everything was a sin when i was a kid uh, I'm not kidding either. Like there's a lot of places we didn't go, a lot of things we didn't do, never had a TV. People often don't believe that. We never had a TV growing up. Uh, I was thinking just today, the fir- first time I ever went to a movie, I was 16 years old, I think is what I was. We're in Montreal, Quebec. I wanted to go see Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. And <laughs> my dad was, well, I just remember him telling me like, you know what, if that's what you want to do, it's between you and God. I don't even really remember a lot about the movie because the whole time I was paranoid. Like, what if something happens? Like, am I right with God? It wasn't an excellent adventure, that's for sure. Um, but we would sneak. So there was a few places I would sneak to, to watch TV when I was a kid. There was a lady, it's quite a walk, probably a mile named Evangeline. I used to go down there and watch Dukes of Hazard and Woody Woodpecker. Was that 4 and 4.30 or whatever? So, so you sneak down, sin, come, up, come back home for dinner. Um, <laughs> it's true. 
uh, and then I've shared before at my nanny's, my nanny would always, uh, she had a TV, she didn't care, uh, but it was awesome. Uh, I would go to my nanny's and uh, watch some baseball games, but mainly we would watch, um, uh, we would watch Price is Right. Uh, we would watch Whammy, No Whammy, No Whammy. Remember that thing? Like, stop. Uh, we, we would watch that, and then my nanny was really into all my children, and we'd watch all my children. Like, it was at one o'clock. And I was probably seven, eight, nine, but I was into like Tad and Chandler and who was cheating who, and I used to be like glued to it, like whatever, the Susan Lucci character, whatever, just as a kid, you're like, everyone wanted to date her. Anyway, this has nothing to do with my sermon. <laughs> this is nothing. And I said earlier, my, my dad had friends, I thought my dad was strict, my dad had friends even stricter than him. And I'm not making light, just, some of them would actually go into hotel rooms and cover up the TV with a blanket. Uh, they, would, they would say like, TV's the eye of Satan and all this stuff. Uh, and I've said over the years, it got so stuffy under there watching that TV. Uh, <laughs> 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 but my, when I was trying to think like, what shows was my dad into? Um, the, the one that stood out the most to me was Golden Girls, that <laughs> of everyone I was trying to think, like my, my dad, pray for him, Jeremy, my, <laughs> my dad loved watching Golden Girls, and Golden Girls, they, they would say, thank you for being, thank you for being a friend. Travel down the road and back again, your heart is true, you're a pal and a confidant. And if you threw a party and invited everyone you knew, you would see the biggest gift would be from me. And the card attached would say, thank you for being, thank you for being a friend. Anyone here today, where's my country music lovers? I love country music. I'm from Belleville, I'm from Butler, I'm from Fredericktown, I'm, from, I'm one of you. I like country music too. You're like, finally a song we know. Brother Tracy Lawrence would say, <laughs> oh, this message is way off track. <laughs> you find out who your friends are. Someone's going to drop everything. I was actually reminded of even a couple weeks ago when I was going over this song, Pastor Chad, I am flying back from, from preaching somewhere. I get stuck at an airport six hours away, and they tell me, they canceled 28 flights like this, and they tell me, we may get you out tomorrow, but it actually may be two days. We're so backed up, and pilots are, are lacking and low, and I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, like, can I rent a car? And so I check, and, and they're, they're saying cars are unavailable. The closest hotel is 18 miles away. And so I text uh, my one friend, Derek, and he's like, he lived an hour and a half away. He's like, you're not going to believe this. I'm, I'm seven minutes away right now. Let me come. I left my suitcase there and everything. Let me come and get you, and I can drive you this far. It's now going to put us at probably three or four o'clock in the morning. And so I reach out to Pastor Chad and him and Isaac was like, we'll come get you. And they drive. We meet at like four in the morning. Uh, and it was just a crazy night. But Tracy Lawrence said, you just find out who your friends are when you have a time in your life where it's like, I don't know who would do that for. And then all of a sudden you start thinking of people that you're like, I think they would help. I think they would. And there's something about friends. One, one song said, lean on me when you're not strong. I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. Won't be long. I'm going to need somebody to lean on. So if I ask you today, how many friends do you have? Maybe some of you would say, on Facebook, I have 3,800 friends. On Instagram, I have 1,400 friends. John Maxwell and others said, if in your life you have five true friends, you're a success. Five true friends. When you look at friends, what, what is a friend? Here in these last few minutes, if, if Sean, if you and I was to talk, and we was to say biblically, scripturally, what is a friend? If, if we're looking for good friends, what does a true friend, what, what does that even mean? I believe even studying and preparing just a few things scripturally, 
that the Holy Spirit had stand out to me. The first is, is that a friend loves you. A friend loves you. The Bible says in Proverbs 17, 17, a friend loves you when everything's going good. A friend loves you when you have it all together. Is that what it says? A friend loves you at all times. You know, the story of the prodigal son, the Bible says, Tim, when, when he has all this money and he goes and he has, there's people partying and riotous living and all, but when he spent all of his money and he had nothing, he also had no one. Nothing and no one a lot of times will go hand in hand in life. When you end up all the way down with nothing, often you look around and you also have no one. But if you, I'm not talking about 5,000 friends on Facebook. I'm talking about if you have a few people in your life that love you at all times, it's a friend. You'll have some people that you say they're your friend right now, but really you're just one post away. Just one post away from them saying, we're out. One missed text, one misunderstanding, one no call, no show. And over the years pastoring, I've pastored for quite a while, and you would not believe the amount of times, Chris, that people have told me. When I say, how did, how did this friendship ever fall apart? And they'll say, well, we didn't go to this get together. We didn't go to this gathering. We waved. They didn't wave back. We're sure they saw us at the store and they didn't come over. And now the friendship is gone because somewhere, somehow, someone dropped the ball. But I'm not talking about the friend who's with you when everything goes good, goes right. I'm talking about the friend that loves you at all times that you could miss a hundred waves, but that friend still doesn't walk out. A friend loves you. There's loyalty, there's longevity. They'll speak up for you. This is a big one. People will often tell me, they'll say, Joe, things like this. It happened actually a couple times just in the last week or two. People will say, you know, I heard people talking about whatever and who, or I heard people talking about them and I can't believe they would say this. And why would they do that? And I will often say, so did you say something? Did you say something? And like, no, no, I didn't say anything, but I totally disagree. I just tell you today, silence is not support. Silence is not support. If everyone's talking about the Carmel family and I'm in the room and they're saying, you know, two years ago and five years ago, and can you believe I cannot walk away and feel like, but I didn't say anything. I love the Carmels. I think the Carmel family's awesome, but I, you know, I just, I don't want to. I think a real friend, it's not just silence, they speak up. And they'll be like, I love the Carmel family. Do you have a friend like that? Do you have a friend who would speak up? Do you have a friend who would say something? Do you have a friend who would push back? That's a friend. The next one, not only does a friend love you, but I think a friend helps you. A friend helps you. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 4, two people are better off than one for they can, they can help each other succeed. Succeed. That's really important. If you had one takeaway today, I, I would love even for you just to think about this. Succeed. This friend's going to help you succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Now you'd say, Micah, why are you really stressing the word succeed? It's because over the years I've met a lot of people who can love you in your struggle. They'll never love you in your success. I could give you a hundred examples today if we had time, but let me give you one example. There are people, even on this stage, just hypothetically, I want you to think about this, that if they were singing in this moment, in the shadows, those lights aren't shining down on them, you may even have to squint to see, like, is that Becky Four up there? 
worshiping, no mic, no light, loving Jesus, encouraging you. It's not a gig. It's not a concert. Let's enter into praise together. And a lot of people could relate to Becky here that if all of a sudden she's up here with the mic, you don't have as many people who are celebrating the success. And if she started singing a solo, it could be even less. Usually, people are never going to complain or crit- no, no one's going to say, Pastor Micah, why is Becky up here three Sundays out of four with no mic and no light? But some people could say, why does this one get to sing every week? You see the difference? Now, I want you to think about your life. There are some people that as long as you are at a certain level, they're okay with you. But if you ever get your mic and light moment, so so if you're working the shift no one wants, I I walked out of family today, several families walked out of family today, and I'm taking, his truck was unbelievable and loud, but I'm walking him and, and her out to the truck, and we get the umbrella, and he's like, man, that point about the shift work, you were talking to me today, so I'll share that part again. When you are on the shift no one wants, Everyone could like be, wow, what, what a guy, that's my guy, the sacrifice, everything he does. But let that same guy get the preferred office, the preferred position, the preferred pay, and see if everyone is still saying, my guy. <laughs> well, you loved him when he was there. Don't you still love him when he's here? My point is not everyone can handle success. The Bible said here, find a friend that can help you succeed. You can lose the weight. Your marriage can make it. Why don't you get the degree? What if you try the business? Find a friend who believes that you could succeed. And when you do, they're not going to be upset. They're not going to diminish and demean. They're going to celebrate. Find that kind of a friend. Who do you have in your life right now that is believing in you to succeed? I'm not asking today, it's it's important, but I'm not asking today just who do you have in your life who helps you in your struggle. I want to know who will still clap in your success. Do you have some people like that in your life? And to turn it again, are you that kind of a friend If someone right now has a break, has favor, are are you, do do you, so it's one thing when you drive by someone who's down and out and you're like, you know what, I'm going to be their friend. But I want to know if you can drive by somebody who is seeing just the blessings and they seem like so many things. And I want to know if you could still drive by and in your heart, like, I can't believe they got that break. I know who they really are. Do you know where they came from? No, I want to know if you could drive by and say, thank you, God, for blessing their church. Thank you, God, for blessing their business. Thank you, God, for blessing their home. Thank you, God, for blessing their children. Thank you, God. Are you that kind of a friend? that kind of a friend. Not only does he say, find a friend who helps you succeed, but then he, the very next verse says, and if there's ever a time they fall, there's ever a time they fall. So you're the friend, you want these friends, you want to be that friend where you can celebrate the success, but if they ever fall, if they ever fall, You're the friend that sticks and stays with them. Do you have that kind of a friend in your life? Not only do they stick and stay, but the Bible would say here, if you read that verse again with me, that when they fall, the friend reaches out. So if Amy fell, discouragement, 
depression. You know, we'll say things, oh, they fell off the wagon. They were doing good for a while. Or, you know, their marriage fell or their ministry or calling fell. Or they were trying to overcome that addiction or that habit. And they just fell back in and they fell away and they fell... The Bible says here, find a friend who can help you succeed. It's a two-way street. It's not one way. They help each other succeed, and they're celebrating success. And the next verse says, and if they ever, if they ever fall, they have a friend who, who reaches out. Now, nowadays, you could reach out in a text. You could reach out in an email. You could reach out with a call. You could say, let's grab coffee. But you need to find, you need to have some people in your life who can understand the high points of success. Yeah, this is awesome. But if you ever fall and you hit rock bottom, you have a relationship that says, I'm still here. I wasn't just here when you were up and when things were great. I'm also with you when things are falling apart. Find that kind of a friend. A friend doesn't leave you in the low points of life. If you have someone that while everyone else was walking out and they walked in, if you have that kind of a friend, you ought to thank God. Thank God for friends who don't leave in the low points of life. My final few points, a friend knows how to forgive. A friend knows how to forgive. This is a big one. Proverbs 17, 9, forgive someone and you will what? Strengthen your friendship. Keep reminding them and you will destroy it. There are some people in life who will repeatedly remind you of who you are and what you've done. But a true friend, a good friend, is able to see who you are now, and they're able to see who you are becoming. Find a friend that forgives you, that they know what you've done, and they know where you've been. But every time you talk, it's not a constant reminder of who you once were. Find a friend who sees who you are right now, and they also see who you are becoming. So we close, a good friend helps you become. A good friend helps you become. Proverbs 13, be friends with those who are wise and you will, here's the word, you will, you'll become wise. Choose fools to be your friends and you will have trouble. Choose friends who help you become. Do you have friends in your life that are helping you become? And over the years, one thing, and I don't understand this, I don't claim to have all the answers. I'm just saying I I don't understand this. I don't understand when when people have told me over the years, I have a lot of examples, but, but just let me give you a couple of them. People will tell me, Pastor Micah, I want to give up my drinking. My wife doesn't like it or my husband doesn't like it and I'm struggling. I, I want to give it up. And then when they call me struggling or they call me whatever, they'll oft, if I ask them, like, where were you? What was you doing? What was you? Well, I was just out with some buddies at the club. I was just out with some friends and, you know, I ended up doing some things I wish I wouldn't have. And again, I don't have all the answers, but I would like to press pause in those moments as a pastor and be like, hey, I need you to call them something besides friends. Let's start this conversation over. And don't you say I was out with my friends because I don't believe they're really your friends. Not the friend I'm I'm talking about today. Not the friend I am suggesting to you that matters in your life. Because if they really valued your marriage and they really valued your family and they really valued your future, they're not going to be part of your struggle. If that's who you have as friends, I would suggest getting some new friends. Get some friends who's not going to allow you to do those things. Get some friends who's helping you become. Do you have some people who say, you know what, let's become wiser. Let's become more holy. Let's become more committed. Let's become more. Do you have some friends like that? It's quiet. But it's true. It's true. If your friends are telling you, if I was married to her, I'd leave her too. Well, if you're fighting for your family, get new friends. 
If that was my husband, if that was my kid, if that was my... Well, if you're trying to salvage some of those things and you're like, get some new friends. Do you have some friends who are helping you become? Finally, a good friend has faith in me and faith for me. They have faith in you and they have faith for you. What I mean by that, Mark 2 in, in the voice translation says, four men tried to bring a crippled friend. Four men tried to bring a crippled friend to Jesus. Think about that as we get ready to close today. Thank God, and I celebrate them today. Thank God for people who bring broken people to Jesus. Whether they drive them, whether they sit with them, whether they almost borderline bug them over and over and it's like, would you please leave me alone? I'll just come so you'll get off my case. But thank, I actually celebrate people who bring broken people to Jesus. But they don't just bring them. They bring this broken friend and when they get there, there's a crowd, the door, the windows. The Bible says there was no way to even get in. They're like, all right, let's go. Is that what it says? Not these friends. Because they're not just bringing, they're believing. Chris, the Bible says they, they're like, what if we tear the roof off? Like, let's go up and tear a hole in the roof. And so they do. I mean, you want to, that's why I said, if you've got five of them, if you've got some crazy friends that would do something like this, simply to say, you know what, I'm not, I refuse to let you stay where you're at right now. Elaine, I'm not going to let you stay where you're at. If you have someone in your life who believes in you that much that they would put their name, their reputation out on the line, so they're going to tear a hole in the roof. They're not ashamed to sit with you at a restaurant. They're not ashamed to see you at a store. They're not ashamed to be in a chair beside you because they're like, you know what? I believe in her. I believe in her. And Jesus is so caught up in this moment that the Bible says in the King James Version, the King James Version, verse number five, that when Jesus saw, help me, Jesus is so caught up, Lisa, in this moment that it's not even about this mess. It's not even about the mat. It's not even about this guy. That, Jesus is looking up like, what did you guys just do? When Jesus saw their faith, I don't think there's anyone, there's not anyone who can relate to friendship like Jesus. And when he saw that, he said to the man, oh, you're getting a miracle today. When he saw their faith, you and I need to have some people in our lives that have that kind of faith for us. The song we sang today, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, was written by Joseph Scriven, a young Irishman. His life was known for tragedy, for testing, for loss, for loneliness. He was engaged to be married the night before his wedding. His wife was thrown off a horse. She died. He went into sorrow and shock. Some of the words they use about his story, they said that Joseph spiraled. If you've ever been through deep grief like that, Joseph's response was he was going to move thousands of miles away. He moved to Canada. He left his mom. He had a very close relationship with his mom. But he was in such grief, he moved thousands of miles away. Over time, he got engaged again a second time. Her name was Eliza. And just a couple of weeks before that wedding, Eliza got sick and died. During all of that, they talk about how Joseph was trying to climb out of some of these things he had found his emotions in, the spiraling. He would help widows and poor people and he would cut wood for them. He would read scriptures to people who worked on the railway. 
They said that at certain stops, Joseph would be there reading scriptures. There is something special about not just you, but when you try to help others. Joseph was doing that. But in all of that, they said there was a time that he wrote a poem. This was a poem turned into a song. But he wrote this poem to his mom about how much God was helping him. He told in the song, you heard it earlier with me, he talked about sin, pain, grief, trials, heaviness, heavy laden, sorrow and trouble, forsaken, despised, weakness, temptations and discouragement. And in all of that, he poses the question to us, Marquita, can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows? He doesn't just write about, if you look at the lyrics again, he doesn't just write about sin. He also talks about grief. Now you know why. Now you know why. Back to back. I think she's the one, and then she's gone. If you've ever gone through grief, you can probably track with what he's saying. Can we find a friend so faithful? He talks about, is there a peace that we forfeit sometimes? All because we don't carry. And he sums all of this up by saying, what a friend. But I can't get away from the love of God. The psalmist said that I could go in the wings of the early morning, the uttermost part of the sea. I could make my bed in hell. He's still there. A friend that loves me. How many would say that Jesus could check that box? The second thing we talked about, a friend that helps me. Scripture would go so far as to say that the Holy Spirit is actually called your helper. Check. The third thing we talked about, a friend that doesn't leave me in the low points of life. He doesn't unfriend you when the chips are down. One writer said, even if your mother and father forsook you, he won't check. A friend that, this was number four, a friend that knows how to forgive me. Check. He doesn't have to get the popular vote. He doesn't ask anyone for permission. He says, Micah, if you'll confess your faults, if you'll repent, if you'll turn, I'll be faithful and just to forgive you. Check. A friend is someone who helps me become. Check. Some of you right now, if we told where you were five or 10 years ago, there are people in your row wouldn't even believe it because you met a friend who helped you become. The final one, a friend who believes in me will speak up for you. Check. I think that's why Joseph was so overwhelmed. They talk about even when he was dying, how his friend read this back to him. What a friend. I think it's why Joseph was so overcome with those statements. Can we find a friend so faithful as Jesus? What a friend. Would you close your eyes today and give me the opportunity to pray with you? I'm asking... I'm asking today that all of us in this moment, I was just going to wait for the squeakiness to stop because this, this prayer could change your life. Just with eyes closed all over the room and those joining us online, I'm asking you to reassess your friends. 
Do you have the right friends in your life? Do you have friends that are believing in you, believing for you? Do you have friends that can celebrate success in your life? Do you have friends that are are not going to leave in the low points? Maybe today you could start by praying, God, give me right relationships in my life. I think a fairer prayer would be, God, help me to be the kind of friend we're talking about today. I want to be the friend I should be. And the most important prayer is whether or not you have that life-giving, healthy relationship with Jesus Christ. We sang it earlier, but Joseph actually said, oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain and shame. And the list goes on, things that we bear in our life. All because, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. How is your relationship with God today? Are you spending time with him? Are you talking to him? Are you allowing him to carry burdens in your life? Are you forfeiting some peace? Is there some peace you could have in your life, but you're forfeiting it because you're not realizing that you have a true friend that's waiting on you. He's never left you. Just in this holy moment right now, I would love for you to tell him, I need you, Jesus. Every hour I need you. I want this friendship with God. I want this relationship with God to be where it should be. If you've never given your life to Christ, why not today? Maybe you don't have this friendship I'm talking about. This relationship with him as your Savior and Lord. Why not right now? Why don't you talk to him? You say, Mike, I don't know all the right words. Let's just start with, I need you. Let's start with, will you save me today? Will you forgive me? Will you be the leader of my life? Just put it into your words, but why don't you talk to Jesus right now? with eyes closed all over the room, I would love for you to look back over your own life. And I would love for you to think about the times that Jesus has been the unconditional friend that never left you, like never left you. When you were ready to walk away, he wasn't. And when you hit some of those low points, there he was. I would love for you to think about some of those times where God, when we talk about a friend believes in you. He didn't just tear the roof off of a house. He put a cross on his back. He was beaten for you. He stretched his arms wide and gave his life for you. In your own way, I would love for you just to tell him, thank you, Jesus. We talk about this friendship. One song says, not for a minute. Not for one minute did he ever leave the Johnson family. Not for one minute did he ever leave the Stover family. Not for one minute, even filling up a row and a half, not for one minute, Jake, has he left you or anyone in your family. Not for one minute has he left the Barnett family, the Overholt family, the Fisher family, the Powers family, the Boggs family, not for one minute. He hasn't left the Walker family, he hasn't left the Hamilton family. That's the kind of friend he is. He doesn't walk out when everyone else walks out. He doesn't leave when others leave. Not for one minute. That's the kind of friend you have. And his name is Jesus Christ. He hasn't walked out on the Reed family. He hasn't walked out on the Royce family. He hasn't walked out on on the Hittinger family. That's the kind of friend you have. Why don't you just tell him thank you today? Thank you for being my friend. The high points and the low points of life. And we thank you for it, Jesus. Why don't we stand all over the room, can we? 
just with hands raised. Would you tell him, thank you for not leaving me? Not for a minute. What a friend. 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 Let's sing not for a minute. Declare it today, not for a minute. All the way to the back, side to side. Can we just turn this into a chorus of thankfulness today? Of gratitude to God, not for a minute. Thank you for not leaving the McCauley family. Thank you for not leaving the Davis family. God, I feel the Holy Spirit today. Not for a minute, not for a minute, not for a minute. Not for a minute was I forsaken. Thank you for not leaving the Wallace family and the Wade family, the Martin family. Not for a minute, not for a minute, not for a minute, not for a minute. And we thank you today. Thank you for not leaving the music family. Thank you for not leaving Shamisha. God, we thank you today. Thank you for not leaving the Stucker family, the Porter family. favor if you would if you're close to a family member or a friend I know some of you are already doing this but would you just take their hand if it's a spouse or a close friend maybe you could even just put your arm on their shoulder but God at 1028 I just thank you even in this holy moment as we celebrate all of the times that you stayed you stuck you didn't leave some people could think right now of times they were in depression and discouragement, others addictions. Some people weren't even sure they wanted to live no more. Other people was in such deep grief. Others may be loneliness. But as we reminisce today, all of the times that you stayed and stuck with us, God, we pray over every person in this room today, every single person in this room, and we just thank you, God, for your faithfulness your faithfulness. If someone today, on site or online, if someone in this room right now feels like they're all alone, I pray even in this prayer time that they would be reminded that you will never leave them ever, ever. You will never leave them and you will never forsake them. What a friend, what a friend we have in Jesus. We pray these prayers in Jesus' name.